Hello again everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at how to automate the starting up of your Oracle database when your server reboots for whatever reason. Under normal circumstances this is a desirable behavior. If your server should reboot at 2 o'clock in the morning you obviously don't want to have to go through the hassle in most cases of paging your DBA to start up everything that goes along with your Oracle database. Uh, under normal circumstances you want to have this start up automatically. We're going to look at starting up the two main pieces uh, that most people are interested in, which is obviously the Oracle database and the listener that goes along with the database. There's two main operating systems that most people use to start up their, uh, to run their Oracle software, and that's Windows and Linux or Unix. On Windows, things are pretty easy. When you install your Oracle software and you create instances, services are created for you automatically in Windows. So uh, you can see on the screen right now I have the services applet that comes uh, standard as part of Windows and all of the Oracle services that are created for you automatically all begin with the word Oracle. So if we scroll down here we can see there's all of these Oracle processes here and the two that you're concerned about are one called Oracle Service and TNS Listener. Oracle Service is going to have the name of the instance you created on your server. So in this case it's Oracle Service and in my case it's Sandbox. It's obviously going to be your SID on your server. As long as that guy is set to automatic you don't have to worry about it. The server reboots for whatever reason the database will start up automatically. The other one you're concerned with it has the naming convention of the word Oracle and then the Oracle home name and then TNS listener. So in my case it's going to be Oracle. When I installed the Oracle software I created an Oracle home called AuraDB 11G underscore home 1 and then TNS listener. Again, as long as that guy is set to automatic everything should start up okay when your server reboots. And you can look at the different modes by right clicking and then selecting properties. You can have these different startup types. You can disable the service. You can have it a manual service, automatic. You can delay the start uh, if it's dependent on other services for whatever reason. If you just leave it as automatic, as long as the Oracle service for your instance and the TNS listener uh, for your Oracle home are both set to automatic, you should be in good shape. On Unix, or Linux things are a little more challenging. It's not as easy to do. So I'm going to go into my uh, Linux server here now. And this is just running uh, Red Hat 5.7 or Oracle Linux 5.7 I should say. And all of this is, is pretty standard. So there's three steps that we're going to have to go through on Linux. The first one is to edit a file called Oratab. On most Unix or Linux ser servers, the Oratab file is in a directory called Etsy. So if we do a cd slash Etsy, you can see there's my Oratab file. It's not always in Etsy. In some operating systems like Solaris, it's in, in a, a directory called slash var slash opt opt slash oracle. So just be aware that if it may not be in the Etsy directory. You also may not have an Oratab file. If you've installed the uh, release 12 of the Oracle e Business Suite, the Oratab file isn't created for you automatically. But it's a pretty simple file, so if you need to create it manually, it's real easy to do. So I'm going to use the VI command and go into Oratab. And you can see that there's three fields separated by colons inside this uh, Oratab file. The first field is going to be the name of your instance. So in my case, I have the Vision Demo Database that goes along with the R12 eBusiness Suite. It's called VIS. The second field, again, separated by a colon, is going to be your Oracle Home. So in my case, my Oracle Home is slash home, slash Oracle, slash EBS, slash DB, slash tech, underscore ST, slash 11.1.0. Third field, again separated by colon, is going to be a yes or no field that's going to say, do I want to start up the database automatically when the server boots or reboots for whatever reason. You would think that just changing this from a no to a yes would do all that for you, but unfortunately, like I said, with uh, Unix and Linux, things aren't quite that simple. So this is the first thing you have to do is to make sure that your Oratab file exists and that the field is in fact set to Y for the database instance that you want to start up. The second thing that we have to do is we have to create this file in a directory called etsy init.d. So we're already in the etsy directory file, uh, 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 directory. So now I'm going to cd into something called init.d. And init.d lists all of the programs that will be started uh, upon the database being 
uh, the, the server being booted or rebooted for whatever reason. There's a third step we're going to have to go through that says, okay, under what circumstances do we want these programs or these scripts to run? But for now, we're just going to go out and we're going to create the script that will start up everything for us. You can call the script anything you want. What most people call it is a file called dbora. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this file called dbora. And again, you don't have to call it this. You can call it anything you want, but this is the standard that most DBAs and sysadmins use. This file is going to go through and it's going to start up my Oracle listener and my Oracle database. So first thing we do here is we have this check config um, statement. What does this check config statement do? Well, in order for us to say, okay, this program will run under these different scenarios, depending on how my server starts up, uh, we would have to copy or create symbolic links to this dbora file in a bunch of different directories on our server. That can really be a pain in the neck after a while. Trying to maintain all of these different symbolic links all over the place could really be a pain in the neck. So there's this check config command that we're going to run as part of step three and it's going to read this line and it's going to create the symbolic links for us automatically where they need to go. So there's three values that go along with check config here. 35, 99, and 10. 35 stands for the different run levels that I want to run. So in this case, I'm gonna, I want to create um, a symbolic link for this particular file in run levels 3 and 5. We'll talk about run levels here in a second. The 99 is a priority. Where do I want this to run as part of my startup? So for run levels 3 and 5, 99 is the lowest priority that's out there. So if I start up my server in run levels uh, 3 or 5, it's going to start up all of these different processes. This particular process, this dbora file, I'm going to put towards the end. I'm going to say to the uh, server, start up all, everything else that you need to, and then at the very end, run this script and start up my database. The 10 is just the opposite, right? The 10 is where the service is going to get stopped as part of my priorities when I shut down my server for whatever reason. I want the database to be shut down as one of the first things that it does. I don't want it to wait for everything else. I want it to be one of the first things that the operating system is going to shut down during my, my startup. So I give it a low number. So once I have all of this defined, I want to set some environment variables. I want to set where my Oracle home is. I want to set who the owner is. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that the Oracle uh, file to start up my instances that Oracle provides for you automatically, I want to make sure that file exists. So that's what all this if statement does. It says, OK, in the Oracle home, in the bin directory, does DB start exist? If it doesn't exist, then I want to break out of this right away and say, hey, DB start not found. This is going to echo to a log file. and I just want want to exit out of this uh, guy completely. If it does exist, it'll skip over this if statement, and then it will look at the parameter that was passed to this particular script. Uh, if I'm starting up my server, I'll pass the word start, and this happens automatically at the operating system level. If I'm shutting down my server, it passes the parameter stop. If I'm starting up, pretty self-explanatory, right? As the uh, I'm going to do a super user command. I'm going to go in as the Oracle owner, which in this case happens to be Oracle. That's the user I use to install my software. And then I'm going to run this command file, Oracle Home Bin Listener Control. I'm going to start up the uh, listener that's associated with my Vision Demo Database, VIS. Then I'm going to run the DB Start command. That should start up my database. If I'm passing in the parameter stop, and again, this happens automatically at the operating system level when I'm shutting down or starting up my server, what do I want to do? I want to do the exact opposite, right? I want to, I want to shut down the listener, and then I want to call a script called DB shut, which will shut down my database gracefully. You can see that the script lines close an if statement with the opposite of the if statement, which is just the if statement backwards, fi. Same thing for the case statement. The end of the case statement is just the word case written backwards, esac. So now that I have those guys in place, I want to create the symbolic links for this particular script in the appropriate runtime levels. And I said I was going to come back to runtime levels. There are seven basic runtime levels in most Unix systems. Uh, run level zero is a, a, a system level uh, halt. 
Run level 1 is for single user mode. It's usually used when uh, there's something wrong with your system and the root needs to log on and maybe do some system maintenance. Run level 2 is the multi-user where mul multiple people can log into your system but no networking capabilities are enabled. Run level 3 is where uh, multiple users can log into the system and networking is enabled. So that's one of the key run levels that are out there. Run level 4 isn't used. Uh, it's used internally by the developers of the software. Run level 5 has everything that run level 3 has, which is multiple users can log into the system, network is enabled, and it also enables something called a display manager, which is kind of the graphical interface for logging into your system, your X Windows environment. Run level 6 is uh, when, you, when you're going to reboot your uh, server. So 3 and 5 are the two most important ones, and that's why when we were looking at DB Aura, we want to set up the script for uh, levels 3 and 5. Whenever we enter levels 3 and 5 as part of our server, we want to run the script. The script will then go out and start up our database. The old way of doing it, you had to create these symbolic links and all these crazy directories. There's this new command called checkconfig. And what checkconfig allows you to do is you can add a file like Aura tab. And it says it doesn't exist because I changed my directory. So let's go back into the Etsy directory. Run this command again. And I don't want to do Aura tab. That's why it's, it's screwing up here. Let's go back to init.d. I don't want to do Aura tab. What do I want to do? I want to do the file I just created, which is dbaura. So what check config does is it looks at that line inside of DB Aura and says, oh, okay, you want this in levels three and five. So I'll go out there, I'll create the symbolic link for you, I'll give it a priority of 99, which is what you specified as part of the startup. And we can check that by going into the different runtime directories. So if we go into rc.d, let me go back one, rc.d. And you can see here are the different runtime directories, and 0 through 6 correspond to the 7 run levels that I mentioned earlier. So we created it in 3 and 5. So let's go into rc3.d and take a look. And there's a file. There's a file called s99 db aura and it's exactly what it sounds like right it's my db aura file that i just created and i gave it a process of saying that when i wanted to start up i wanted to be a pro uh, have a process value a priority of 99 so it's right at the very end so check config did that for me automatically i can also use the check config command to list all the different services that are out there. So if I just do check config list, it'll list all of these tons and tons of services. I don't want to see everything. I just want to I want to pipe that into the grep command and just look for db aura. So you can see that here for run level 3, run level 5, it is defined and it is on. So check config sets up all these things for me automatically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot my server and I'm going to pause the video here as the server goes through the reboot and if I set up everything properly once I reboot I should be able to look at all the processes that are running on my system and see if uh, all of the Oracle database and the listener is in fact running so I'm going to pause I'm going to start the the reboot right here now and I'm going to pause the video and as soon as it comes back uh, we'll log back in again and we'll check to make sure that everything's running okay so my server has rebooted finally here, so I'm going to restart the session. And let's take a look to see if my database is running. You can see there it is, my VIS database is running without me having to do anything. And take a look and make sure that my listener is running and you can see my listener is running okay so it looks like everything has been set up properly let's do a quick test just to make sure
and you can see I can get into my database without any problem. That's it. So those are the things that you need to do to automate your um, database processes on both Windows and Linux.